if you're not a grandparent yet, but you're hoping to become one, here's the one thing you need to discuss with your daughter. At just 27, Love Island star Amy Hart has decided to freeze her eggs, prompted by the news that she may be facing early menopause, just like a mum. Uh, here to tell us why every mother and daughter should have the menopause chat sooner rather than later, please welcome Amy Hart. Thank you. Thank you. You're looking fabulous. Thank you. Yeah. So, you know what? Is it, just saying that, I never had that conversation with my mum. I never discussed the menopause with my mum. I think for me it started with when, obviously, I was very unlucky in dating and my whole thing was, what if I never have children? What if I never have children? And it was my mum who said to me, well, if you get to 35 and you haven't met the right person, we would financially and emotionally support you to have a baby on your own. Because your mm. mum and your nan went through the menopause at quite an early age. Yeah, and my they? auntie as well. And also, they all had all their kids by the time they are 25. Uh... So we had nothing really to go on. And then, obviously, they all went through menopause, sort of early 40s. Mm. But and what age did they go through the menopause? Uh, my nan and my auntie's 42. My mum started at 44. So Pretty quite sick. early, yeah. My mm. sister went through it 37 to 30. Yeah. She started going through it quite early as well. Cool. Yes. So. I, I get where the panic, because my mum, when we were talking about this earlier, went, had her menopause, went through her menopause in her 30s. And before we decided to have Rex, I definitely considered the egg freezing route, because I knew mm -hmm. I wanted more children, and, and you are likely to take after your mother with the menopause. But when I found out what you have to go through, it's effectively like going through IVF, yes. isn't it? It's actually really, really yeah. a, a tough experience. So well, the fertility MOT in itself, mm. I was told, uh, well, I sort of li probably selectively listened, um, that it was a blood test and then a scan. So I'm thinking it's like a jelly belly scan. Yeah, yeah. So when they asked me to take my pants off, I was like, sorry, like, <laughs> at least take me out first. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so it is, it, it, is an internal, it is an internal scan, which wasn't actually as bad as I thought. Yeah. No. And he had a look around and then turned the screen. I was like, would you like to see? He's like, this is your ovary, this is your other ovary. And so what um, was this? Did you see was the this eggs like... in it? Did mm. you see the eggs? Yeah. Wow. So this and was it... a fertility MOT. MOT. Right. So. They, sh they look at... So you do your blood test, which is for AMH level. Right. And then they do the internal scan to look at your ovaries. And where I was in my cycle, I had the perfect number of eggs. I think I had 15 on one ovary and about eight on the other, which is good because you only need one out of those is what you ovulate. Yeah. So that was that. So he said, yep, yeah, eggs are looking really good. Took me over to the desk and was like, so your AMH level is 8.5. So I'm thinking out of 10, I'm like, lovely result. <laughs> Turns out it's between 6 and 20. Um, right. It's actually quite low for my age. And what is that? So the that AMH is level. your prognosis for how long you'll be fertile for. Oh, so they don't know for sure, do they? I don't know for sure. Mm. It's not a guarantee. And it's like egg freezing, not a guarantee. It might not work. Yeah. Um, but it's just a sort of indicator and it fits right. in with my family history as well right in that i probably will go to menopause in early 40s which then i didn't think there's gonna be any problems i'm 27 i've always had regular periods never had any problems at all so as much i've always wanted to freeze my eggs like so, yeah i'll go for fertility mot it's not gonna be an issue so when he said that i was like wow okay and yeah. everyone kept saying it might be bad news it might be bad news i was like yeah but i'll be fine i'll be fine when he told me i was like wow okay like, mm. that's... OK. That's really fine. Yeah, cos that has I now... Said, say, you're gorgeous. Why do you think you have so much trouble in relationships? Why have you not met somebody? <laughs> <laughs> we told you she was blunt. Yeah, we told you she was blunt. blunt. I think all the people that I've met, I've either been too much or not enough for, so I need to meet someone that I'm just right for. Too much in what Well, way? they should be just right for you, Ames. I know, that the, too. No, the, the... I'm quite a full-on person. <laughs> <laughs> as as demonstrated on national television. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, do you know what? Going back to fertility, did you freeze your eggs in the... Have you frozen? Um, no, so I'm going to do it in March. And you are definitely going to do it. Definitely going to do it. Because there, it's a big old process, yes. isn't it? I think sometimes when I went and looked into freezing my eggs, I just thought, I don't know what I thought, actually. Mm. They were just going to yeah. pluck an egg out yeah. and put, put it, it in the freezer. freezer. <laughs> yeah. I know that's very well, that's what ignorant. it sounds like. It does. It's, it's, it's but it's the hormone of, injections. Yeah, ten days of injections mm. to make your ovaries work over time. And the emotions... So your hormones are all over yes. the place. So my friends are really looking forward to that. It's a big decision. It's a yeah. decision. Um, so they 10 days uh, injections and it's another injection and another injection. Then you have to go under general anaesthetic. Mm. So that's the thing. You've got to be really sure about it because although the risks are small, it's obviously always a risk yeah. when you have general But what anaesthetic. if you meet someone now, between now and March? <laughs> <laughs> I'd still, do, still it, do it. Yeah. So I'm not going to live my life by whatever man I meet. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> but as well, you don't know. I could meet someone, get married, mm. and then 
get to 35, try for a baby, and then say, oh, actually, those eggs you froze when you are 27 yeah. are better quality than the ones you've got now, yeah, so yeah. we'll use those instead. Well, and you are also going to have to find a way of fertilising yes. these eggs, aren't you? So if you don't meet somebody, then yeah. presumably it's a sperm donor? Or yeah, a, sperm donor. Or another um, willing... yeah. One, one of my boys, there was um, it was a co obviously a quote taken out of context um, about how I was going to have a baby with my gay best friend. I never knew how many gay best friends I had <laughs> until it was all over the papers. <laughs> I got lots of texts saying, why didn't you choose me? Is this me? Did I drink this when I was drunk? <laughs> and they, really? they all had the screenshots all set to them. As soon as it all went live, all their phones were going, is this you? Is it, you had a baby with Amy? <laughs> Not that I know of. <laughs> of course, it's technology that allows you to have these options, isn't yes. it? And it's a wonderful thing. Is there a risk, and I'm not trying to pour cold water on things, but the NHS doesn't provide no. this service and, and they don't particularly recommend it. I mean, you're 27. Do you maybe just need to kind of chill out and let things go a little bit? Oh, maybe, but I just think I'm going to do it at some point, so my eggs are going to be better quality now than they are in two, three, four years' time. I'm, I'm I had my Amy. first child at 39, and I have the most fantastic child in the world. Oh. I know, <laughs> I know. But, but this, everybody is yeah, fertile at 39. This is the thing. Oh, my yeah. mum's yeah. very best friend had a baby at 44 yeah. with no help at all. But, obviously, all my family had their kids at 25, so I can't bank on that. And yeah. I think I did always think, you know, I can do whatever I want. My 20s are for me, my 30s are for having kids, lovely. And then you go, oh, actually, that's not my decision, that's my body's decision. So if I can have... I'd love to meet someone, get married, have kids naturally, fine. That's my dream idea. But if that doesn't happen, You've I've got, got my insurance, insurance policy, policy, which yeah. isn't actually an insurance policy, it might work. But, I mean, do you know what? I do think that... Maybe it is, I know that the NHS is under huge strain, but maybe there is something in, if you have parents who have extremely early menopause and you really would like to harvest your eggs, maybe there is something to be said about that mm. being a service that we do offer some people. I don't know. Mm. Well, it's, so 35 is a cut-off date, is it? Well, no, I think we're well, now probably potentially earlier. It was something I thought thinking about earlier because of my... Fertility All decreasing right. in my late 30s because of the early 40s menopause. But you've also been doing celebs go dating. Yes. Have you met anyone there? Let us know. I'm not really allowed to say, but I did randomly, because I sort of forgot I was on a date, did bring up the fact that I was freezing my eggs, which apparently is not something you should say on a date. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No wonder you're having trouble finding someone. I quite like it. I mean, our first bit of so the first thing I spoke to him about was how I wanted to have more children. Mm. I think if you're up front with someone, mm. I'm, yeah. I know sometimes people go, oh, mm. but then well, maybe not on the first date. No. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a bit early. Oh, oh, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, Amy Hart shot to fame on last summer's Love Island after having her heart broken in front of the entire nation. But you can't keep a good girl down. One whirlwind of a year later, and the former air stewardess is on top of the world. She's here now to talk boyfriends, babies, and why therapy has helped her beat the bullies. Oh, hi, Amy. How are you? Hello. Oh, it's so nice hi. to see you. Hi. I'm missing. I want to come in the studio and have oh. my normal um, loose and treat of a bacon sandwich. Or bread. <laughs> <laughs> one day <laughs> soon, I. One day soon, I hope. So, uh, so how how have you been? Yeah, I mean, it's been quite a weird time, obviously, because lockdown. Obviously, all my work stopped, and then all my friends are either in the theatre industry or yeah. work in airlines. So. Nobody's been doing any work, so I'm just worrying about everyone. But yeah. apart from that, I have enjoyed the chill time. Yeah, it is. It's such a worrying time, isn't it? Amy, I wanted to ask you, because I realised that I don't think I ever asked you when you've been on the show before, and I always wanted to know, I think the way that you broke... You, the way When you went through your break, breakup, you did it mm -hmm. so perfectly. I think it should be given out at schools. You were dignified, you were composed, even though your heart was broken. Were you getting really clear therapy behind the scenes on how to deal with it? Um, I think I was having therapy in the villa, and I'm still having therapy now about stuff pre-villa, but um, I think as well it was my job as an air hostess because no matter what's going on, you've got to keep your cool and you've ah. got to just, you know, keep it going and stuff. So that was sort of where I think I got my grounding from because yeah. when you're out in the cabin, no matter what's going on, you've got to be really cool, calm and collected. Mm. And then when you get back in the galley, that's when you go mad. But of I course, you're still idea. feeling everything and it's still going on. So yeah. do, you, do you find that therapy has been a, a revelation for you? Has it changed things for you in your life? 
a hundred percent like it's completely changed my life um I went on holiday in October with a friend and went again last week with the same friend. And she said, it's like being on holiday with a completely different person, Mm -hmm. Um, just where I'm so much more calm. I'm confident, like the picture you've just shown. um, Back in October, it would have taken 300 pictures. I would have hated them all. My friends would have had to pick one for me to post. Now I'm like, yeah, it's fine. It's just me. I'm happy with how I am. So Good. I think therapy has completely changed my mindset yeah. 100%. Oh, that, and you are looking amazing and obviously feeling amazing. Now, tell us about your teeth. My teeth. I had them done the other day. Um, finally, 10 years later, after having my first set of veneers, um, have had a whole new set put on. Um, yeah, lots of anaesthetic, so it didn't hurt at all. But, yeah. yeah, I'm so happy with them. And was this directly a reaction to the trolls? Um, I think... Obviously, my first set, I was 17 years old. I lived in a small town. I was an air, and then I was an anesthetist. Um, obviously, my life's changed a lot, and people didn't think that I had, I don't know, X reality star teeth. Um, and oh. people like to tell me that every single day. Oh. Um, and I literally used to get messages every single day, and you can brush them off for a certain amount of time. And then I was a bit like, okay, well, I've got, you know, why not? Let's just have them done. And I'm so happy I did now. Amy, can I just ask you, uh, what if they start picking up some other part of you? I mean, are you in a place now where you can just ignore them? Because otherwise you're just going to have to change everything because you know what they're like. I know. Um, That's actually something I spoke to my therapist about a lot. Because I said, what if I have my teeth done? And then everyone's like, oh, they're still awful. Um, So um, we talked about it a lot. And I realised, because I'm doing the teeth for me as well, um, it's fine. But, yeah, learning to deal with the trolls. It's like, I have grown up my whole life thinking I'm not good enough, that I'm unlikable, that I'm ugly. And my, but not knowing that that's why I've been living my life, where I've been living my life. And my Mm. therapist has done so much work with me into making like me realize that I am a likable person. Like I do deserve to have very nice friends. I'm not a failure. Like I am a good person. And that's why I'm now like completely loving life and just, (laughs) Having a lovely time. Great. Um, well, <laughs> Amy, I would, I would want to ask you, you know, obviously with everything that's happened, the trolling, being in Love Island and the heartbreak that the nation saw you go through, and now you're kind of propelled into this, like, celebrity world. How are you finding dating now and, and trying to trust someone and build that relationship and, and knowing that they're approaching you just for you? Well, I don't know. Like, I, I like, know a lot of people who are in, like, the theatre industry and stuff, so it's quite a similar industry. So I'm, I reckon I'll probably, hopefully, because I love a West End show, meet someone from that industry. Um, <laughs> but I think um, I'm such, like, I pride myself on being such a normal person. And when people meet me, they are like, oh, OK, no, you're, you're really normal. So I think once all the Love Island stuff is out of the way, people realise I am just a normal person. So, Amy, is, is there anyone that you've got um, your eye on? Because, you know, I do quarantine date nights. Maybe you need to come up there. <laughs> is there anyone, girl? <laughs> is there anyone you've got your eye on? There's a couple of people. I've got my friends trying to sort it out at the moment, trying to match make for me. Amy, last time you were on the show, you were speaking about freezing your eggs and it was something that you really wanted to do. Do you still feel the same about it? Yes, I do. And obviously then lockdown happened and all the clinics closed. Um, It's just a case of having three weeks where I'm in the country um, so I can go for my scans and stuff. But obviously now with the quarantine, I had trips away, booked for work and holidays. But now with the quarantine, I think I'm going to be quite free. So luckily, that means I can go and freeze my eggs. And just and just for those people that, that didn't watch the show last time, you, you, it, this is really important to you, isn't it? Because you do, you had your, your mother had an early menopause and you've had the tests that say that you could possibly be at risk of that yourself. Yes, my AMH levels aren't dangerously low, but they're not really high either. So it's just like a little... I'd love to meet someone, get married and have loads of kids, but it's sort of like a little insurance policy that if I don't, um, I want to be a mum. So that's my little insurance policy. Yeah, no. we haven't got we haven't got much time left, but the huge top news topic of the day is there is no longer an Argos catalogue. How are you feeling? <laughs> gutted, absolutely <laughs> gutted. Like, when I have kids. When I 
frozen my eggs and I have my kids, um, they're never going to know the joy of circling. And it's just really sad. What are we going to do? We've got to find some solution to this. Circling and patience. It's a, it's a big problem. Amy, as ever, is so, so lovely to see you. And we can't wait to have you back here and feed you bacon sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of Thank love, you. darling. Bye. Bye. See you soon, I hope.